Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to South Goa and I couldn't uh, shoot an intro because uh, it was raining too heavily on this day and um, I need to reach uh, in an hour to Margao. So I reached Margao at around 2. I had lunch with Melissa and then we headed towards the location where the class was going to uh, be conducted and uh, this is the recipe sheet that Melissa gives everyone before the uh, classes begin. For the benefit of those who are coming to my class for the first time, I am Melissa Martins from Vasco and uh, I have been doing these classes for the last 30 years, a long time and uh, welcome to my Portuguese uh, dessert class. Okay, so I'll give you a small uh, a brief background of what I am doing today. I will be doing two desserts which are baked. So one is Pashte de Nata, one is Balsariwal. Uh, one is a uh, Aletria, everyone must have had it at some time or the other. It is made of a coconut which is not very tender and which is not very ready. Okay, it's a medium but uh, since uh, we are in the middle of monsoon, uh, getting it is a little difficult. So we have uh, not been able to get the exact one which I could show you all. We'll manage. Portuguese desserts are very famous for their Mari biscuit. Somehow Mari biscuit, uh, Mari biscuit pudding. And uh, the last one is, uh, we are doing Deidoshta Dam. So those are like, they are called uh, lady fingers. So basically it's like a marzipan dipped in a caramel uh, sugar. Okay, so these are the five uh, desserts which we will be doing. For the benefit of those who are attending my class for the first time, my workshops are interactive. I don't uh, stand and demonstrate to you all, I involve you all. So everyone does some work or the other. If you go through a original Pashte de Nata recipe, it is very lengthy. Okay, so here what I try to do is I try to evolve the recipe and I try to make it easy. Easy to work with. Okay, so the first recipe which we will be doing is Pashte de Nata. So that has got three steps. One is the puff pastry. One is the custard and one is the, the main thing is the custard and secondly is the puff pastry. Okay. Now we normally do them in these little cups. We normally do them in these little cups. So these are the molds for the uh, pashte de nata. So step one is we will be rolling out the puff pastry. Now if you're making pashte de nata, it is better you use a ready-made puff pastry. So basically is it's the, it's the tart which is crispy. And it has got a custard filling which is baked. Okay. This is our puff pastry. So this is uh, Rene's Goodies puff pastry which is easily available in uh, any supermarket. You will see it uh, with, a green, uh, with a green sticker. It says uh, Rene's Goodies puff pastry. So what happens is this is a ready-made dough which is, which is uh, already layered and given to you in a frozen form. Now when you bring it home, you thaw it in the fridge below keep it, it, it becomes this consistency, okay? Otherwise, it is hard as stone. So then you bring it home, thaw it, and all you need to do is just roll it out. Uh, layers of my puff pastry are already ready. And now I am going to roll it out. So this is how you roll it out when you when you uh, bring it home and you thaw it. Can you tell us something about this dessert? Basically, history is it's a Portuguese custard tart and it is very, uh, it's like you get it all over in Portugal. So we are trying to revive all these, you know, old desserts which our grandmothers and all used to make. So somewhere down the line, it was lost, the plot was lost and now we are, you know, doing it again. We don't have it for weddings, very frankly, because it's basically like what, like having a tart. So now what we have for weddings is the Dedoshta Dam and the Aletria. That is more a dessert for uh, this. This is more like a tea time snack. I have rolled out my puff pastry like this. What I'm going to do is, I will divide it into two parts, okay? And I will tell you all why I'm dividing it into two parts. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my puff pastry and I'm going to roll it like a Swiss roll, okay? Tight, okay? See that it is tight. Okay. And now, cut the edges. Keep this. These layers are already formed, so you shouldn't discard them. Now, can you see this? Now, actually, you will not be able to find out the layers right now. So, what you do is what I'm going to give all of you all. You can leave your papers down for a bit. Take this in your and with your thumb, slowly build it up like this. Okay? This is going to be your tart. And in this is going to be the custard, and then we bake it. Okay? 
Or want to sit and do, you can sit and do. Yes, have you been to any of our classes before? Yes, I think two or three. Yeah. So, uh, what was it? Same thing? No. One was uh, Arabic and one was uh, I think basic uh, picking. So, how do you find a class? A class? It's very interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. How is she with the uh, explanation and all that? Very, very good. How was it? Very useful? Did you uh, manage to prepare anything at all? Yes. It is so many stuff. <laughs> this very sir's guidance series. <laughs> So how, how is it with you? Like, have you been to any classes? Yeah, it's my first time. Yeah. And how do you feel it's gonna be like? You are planning to learn only Portuguese or? Why I, is it specifically like you attend attending this class? Well, I'm a baker myself. Okay. I just finished college, so it's not. I'm not well known. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Samuel Fernandez, and uh, you're from uh, Malta. I'm from Porto, Portugal. And uh, this is just like a, a hobby of mine. Mm-hmm. You like know all different types of desserts because I. Do usually desserts, really. and we love Melissa's class. I have a lot of it. Yeah. Why do you love it? Is it very interactive? Yes, it is. So basically, in my workshops, we uh, like uh, we like active participation. Basically, it's not like a YouTube channel because there is lot of content on YouTube. You can sit and watch it. And so when you watch this, it's like a movie. Yeah. So I like to involve my students in what they do. Otherwise, they just sit down and you'll be half asleep, and you know you'll not learn anything. So I basically my classes are interactive. I involve everyone, like to do something or the other, and. At home, what everybody is waiting. <laughs> This is my 80 gram. This is my uh, 80 grams of uh, maida, and I am taking uh, 100 ml of 100 ml of milk. Yeah, 100 ml of milk. Yeah. Yeah. This is the. Uh, no, 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 no. 100 ml. So just mix up the. Just mix it up. Or a bit. So I got to get a class at least. Oh, I'm so thrilled. Actually, I'm um, come from Canada. I'm from Canada, so I just got a one one. So you know, sometimes it can be missed. But remember, please see that you add um, vanilla essence. And if you're using, if you're using Bush, Bush is a very mild essence. Add a little extra than what you normally add. Our milk and uh, maida. We've used the cold milk just to make it into a paste. Okay. Then add a little more. Now you add your. You mix it up. It's just you. It's only the yolk. Yeah, it's cholesterol bomb. Now you mix it up in this. I don't put the powder. No, no, no. The eggs which we use are a little pale. They are not like the uh, farm eggs, which are like very yellow. So what we do is we put a little bit of uh, color, uh, just a dash of yellow color. Just to. Give. I'm putting this custard. This is the. Now the original recipe tells you to bake your pasta the nata with this custard. Now I will show you. A uh, uh, you know a hack which can make it a little more simple. You know, heat it up to a point where it thickens slightly. I don't want it to completely become like a custard. Okay. It is runny at the same time. It is not solid. Okay. So I'm going to put it off the fire. No, I have only one. But make it very fast, no worry. Yeah. Actually, my oven temperature two hundred. But uh, you all please check every oven has a different uh, setup. So don't go on my two hundred. Like if you are using an oven now, this oven I'm using does not have a fan. Now if you are using an oven which has a fan, then if you put it at two hundred, it's going to burn because the uh, fan ovens temperatures are much more higher than this. Like at home in my residence, I have a Murphy Richard with the fan. I bake my cake on one thirty five. 135 if i bake it on this at 135 it will take forever and uh, we go to our next dessert which is ball sarival okay now ball sarival is uh, we call it ball sarival because it is supposed to be a cake without a rival okay so in this cake there is no maida All you need to do is you have to have cashew nut powder. 
Now, when you say cashew nut powder, I have already made it since we come from Vasco. We have to carry a lot of stuff, so uh, you know, to make our life a little simple, we make the powder and we come. Now, uh, what you do is, it is a little coarse. The cashew nut powder is a little coarse, but when you are making the powder, you only pulse, pulse it. Pulsing is just put. Now, this is a very simple recipe. Actually, if you go to see, it's got just three ingredients: egg, sugar, cashew nut. But having said that, it is very tricky. See, otherwise it can flop. Number one, when you are beating your eggs. Like I use these food grade bowls of mine. These are all food grade. Your bowls have to be extremely clean and without any oil. Now what happens sometimes? Our health, they are a little in a hurry. So there is a little, you know, if there is a little oil, what will happen is your egg white will never beat. You will be beating and beating and beating, and you will be incorporating more uh, um, heat into your batter, but it will not beat. That is when stop, stop, throw your egg away. Because it's not going to happen. It is. I'm telling you this out of experience. So it is not going to happen. Now, secondly, is in the recipe it will tell you slowly add sugar. Please make note. Now see, as I tell you, these recipes of mine have evolved over the years, and these are the things which I change. But the recipe remains the same. So what you do is you make your cashew nut powder and you make your sugar powder. Measure them all together in a bowl and keep it aside. Your egg yolk, your egg whites. What you need to do is you need to use trays with very less depth in them. Okay, don't use trays in which you bake your cakes in. Yeah, because what happens is when there is less height, you get a uniform baking. If you take a cake tray with like so much height, your like your normal four inches cut cake tray, center remains wrong. Only use a brownie brown tray, tray or a Swiss roll tray. Because finally, what happens with a bowl sari wall is you give the egg a huge lift, but when it bakes, it becomes like a meringue. Yeah. What is a meringue? A meringue is like a biscuit. So this thing sits down completely. So you buy uh, buy a Swiss roll tray. All the uh, little little preparation goes into uh, doing this. See that your tray is nice and dry. Essential. Don't uh, like how we do it for cake. No. Uh, okay, we'll grease it. We'll dust maida. Tuck tuck tuck. You'll do. Don't try it for ball sari bhaji because what happens is it is uh, this thing gets stuck very easily. Okay, because it's basically right. sugar. Yeah, it's sugar, and as sugar cools, we all know that as sugar cools, Ravana, just hold this place. As sugar cools, it hardens more and more. Okay, so now what you do is you take your, just put it. I'll just get a little. Is we'll just keep them here. Okay, so now what we do is we start. Come. Your family because just break it up. I'm just waiting only for my. No, no, no. Add one, one spoon. Yeah. Okay. Now sit. Now when you add it, be very gentle. Uh, no folding, just gently mix mix it up, okay? Because what happens, your uh, foam which you have made is priceless. Add, add it, okay? See that you add. Since first, because what happened, it can uh, interfere with your uh, egg whites, okay? Add it last. Paper, which is very very important because once it cools down, yeah. See, already it is getting stuck. See, mm -hmm. see, yeah. yeah. And then you will find it very difficult to take it off. So please, don't worry if it breaks. We just put it back. Uh, but you can use parchment. Uh, my parchment was at home, so. 
thick enough. Yeah. Because sugar oh, doesn't. Yeah, yeah, because see, sugar doesn't take time. Sugar uh, heats up also very fast and it hardens. So don't multitask at that point. Fat spread. Okay, it's a margarine basically. Now you will get a nickel like a 250 gram uh, icing. 250 grams you use icing sugar. You get these kind of uh, icing sugar packets in the market. And uh, you put 250, you put 200 grams of uh, neutral light and 50 grams of butter. Butter we are using only for the flavor. Uh, can put this yes. right? Ah, okay. So 200 grams of butter. Yeah. And then you start layering it with your uh, butter cream, okay? of them basically what i'm showing you all is just the decoration and egg white egg yolk in this in this we don't put color or anything see this has got a and very fine okay just snip it off it's really fine decoration for the lathe this is not in it. You cook your tender coconut. Okay. You are texture. That otherwise it's like coconut, coconut, coconut. Oil. So it gives you a texture. What I do is I just add a little bit of pink color to my lathe. Uh, just light. It's okay. Now we will move that side. And I will put my vanilla essence. Okay. This is how our lithria. Yeah, on slow fire. Mm -hmm. So see, has to like kind of dry out. Okay. We add a few raisins and not sticking. And see, the water has all dried up. Okay. That is the time when your lithria is ready. This basically has to. Be now we are getting shashlik sticks. So I have tried everything in the book. When you do it, to stick. I have tried dudi, I have tried pumpkin, I have tried uh, to stick it up. Okay, but somehow it is, uh, all this is best is the florist yeah. oasis. Oh, okay, okay. So just cover it with silver. When you are putting your croquet on the stick, don't put the pointed part. Very straight. Oh. Because what happens is, it is a very challenging Amazing. sweet. Once it is done, you have to dip it in caramel. Now that is when the tricky part starts. So that you have to do and then put it into so something. So you can put it in a piece of thermocol, but even thermocol I feel, no, it uh, shakes and it gets it. So your sorted if you just go to a florist, 70 rupees they charge you for the When you're buying the coconuts, See that the coconut is like uh, whitish on outside, which we use for bath. Yes. Okay, use that. Okay, and take it and just like pulse it in the this. Oh, this is pulse. Yeah, this was the need. 200 grams of sugar powder. I'm using sugar powder. 200 grams of sugar powder. Mix it all up like this. Mix it all up and don't keep your gas on high because what will happen is it will start burning. Okay. And when it burns, then that's the end of your. That's it. No, it is. Sugar has to cook. Okay. Now this has got sugar. See, it's leaving the side. See, yeah. see when you do this, leaves the side. See, it's ready. Okay. Now this has got sugar in it. This one. Uh, yeah. This has got sugar in it. So it is going to. At the minute it cools down, it's going to harden. Harden means it will yeah. not harden, harden. Yeah. It is nice and mm -hmm. uh, moist to the to taste. But uh, we have to just leave it for a little while to cool since you all have to form the croquets. Mm -hmm. If you apply a layer of butter on your hands, then the caramel will not bind with the cashew nut. Understood, na? I 
So this is you take one tin of condensed milk mm -hmm. and you take the same quantity of fresh milk. Egg yes. yolks in the custard and whip up the whites. Now what happens is I have found that a lot of people have reservations about eating uh, raw, yeah. raw egg white. Even me, I, I have my reservations about eating egg white, it's not good. So what we do is, in this custard, we put both the egg yolk and the egg white right, in right. the custard, okay? Mix it all up because otherwise what will happen, when you put it on the gas, it will form like an omelette. So what I will do is, I will do the custard on the gas. Wait for it to completely thicken, then what happens is, but it has to get thickened a little more. Custard, just a layer. Biscuits dipped in uh, coffee, coffee, then a layer of custard. Again, biscuit dipped in coffee, a layer of custard. If you're making it in a platter for your for a party, you can do it in a borosil dish and then you can uh, top it up with whipped cream. My uh, custard is ready, see. <laughs> okay, and here I now at this juncture, I put it off. Quickly, okay. otherwise it will. It's a nice strong uh, coffee solution. 